This is my Orbea Orca disc. Lovely, isn't it? This is the fifth generation of the venerable Orca. First launched back in 2003, but this particular one was debuted at the 2016 Tour de France and then launched officially just after. Now, there's been a wholesale change between this and the previous version. So the geometry was tweaked in order to make it more responsive. It got stiffer and then it also got lighter. So this frame set, or the rim brake version, is actually just 790 grams for the frame. And then this disc version adds just another 50 grams on top of that. And that is for the OMR level, which is like the top of the range version, which this one conveniently is. Now, it also got more aerodynamic as well. It's not an out and out aero bike. It turns out that Orbea were working on one of those behind the scenes as well, but certain touches improve the aerodynamics quite significantly. So they've got what they call the free flow fork, where the fork blades bow out slightly. That saves apparently four watts at 40k an hour. Then also the smoother integration from fork crown to frame there also saves you wattage as well. But that's all well and good, but we know that the most important thing of any frame is the paint job. And uh, without wishing to sound too much like Tom last. So I designed the paint job on this. I actually uh, designed this one myself. That's right, using Mayo, which is Orbea's online bike customizer. Now it allows you to tweak loads of different things, so the saddle and the tires and the gear ratios, but perhaps most importantly, it allows you to choose the color. So it gives you 21 to choose from, and then the frame and fork are split into five different panels, and you click on each one to change the color. So for example, you could have a bright pink frame with uh, maybe some orange at the front, with a bit of lime green maybe, and then finish it off with, with a red bit just there. Okay, so I didn't go for that. I've clearly gone for a monochrome design. Uh, I am a big fan of bright, vibrant bikes, but it has to work with your kit. And I think black and white and 50 shades of gray Looks pretty good with a GCN kit. Enough about the frame though, what about the components? Well, let's start with the wheels, shall we? We've got Vision Metron 40 disc wheels. So they're 1,560 grams, which is pretty darn light for a carbon clincher. And they have an external width of 25 mil. Now, I would like to say that I'm running 25 mil wide tires on there in order to maximize the aerodynamics of that combination but that would be a lie. Uh, the reason I'm running 25 mil wide tires on is because there weren't any 28s left knocking around. Uh, the tires themselves are Continental Grand Prix 4002s, which are just absolute classics, it has to be said. Now, on to the components then. As you can see, a SRAM Red ETAP HRD. Now, I've had SRAM Red ETAP on one of my other bikes for a couple of years now, and I absolutely love it. It hasn't missed a beat, despite spending most of its time in a UK climate. The HRD part of the name refers to the hydraulic discs. Now they saw a significant redesign compared to the previous HR models. Some of the advantages are you've got increased pad clearance, so up to 0.4 mil either side of the rotor apparently, so there's even less chance of it rubbing in really poor conditions. Now up front, something I've really made the most of is the contact point adjustment. So that changes how much you need to squeeze the brakes before they start coming on. And I like an awful lot of lever pull, so I've got them set up to be at their maximum there. Now, what else have we got? We've got a Quark D0 power meter on there, so it's accurate to one and a half percent, they say, and all the data is shown on the Wahoo Element Bolt up front there. Now, something about the cranks, which I'm gonna get quite geeky about here. So the frame is designed with a BB386 Evo bottom bracket in mind. So that's really big, really wide, really stiff ones. But I've chosen to run SRAM GXP cranks on there. So that's a slightly narrow spindle. And then I've got little FSA reducers in there inside the bottom bracket. And it all works hunky-dory, it has to be said. Gear ratios, I've got pretty old school now, I suppose. 53, 39 chain rings on there. 53 is probably a little bit big most of the time, but I get on all right with it. But I really like a 39 tooth inner chain ring. Now there are occasions where I'm gonna be massively over geared, but I don't really like spinning up steep climbs anyway. And most of my riding is done on short, punchy climbs back here in the UK where I kind of like muscling my way up anyway. That's paired to an 1128 cassette at the back. It's a SRAM red one, which is frankly, 
a work of art. Right, on to finishing kit then. We've got an FSA Carbon K-Force seat post and we've got FSA Carbon K-Force handlebars as well in a compact shape, which I must say I do really, really like, but they're not compact width-wise. I'm still running 42 centimeter wide bars. Then we've got an FSA OS99 stem. Looks carbon, but it's actually a 3D forged aluminium stem, but with a carbon wrap on there. Now, speaking of wrapping, we've got physique handlebar tape on there. And then I've also got a very old trusted physique Arione saddle on there. I think this one has done about four years now. Still looking great, apart from a black dot on there, which was entirely my fault. I accidentally used a permanent marker when we shot a video a couple of years ago about how to set your saddle up to be perfectly straight. It annoys me, if I'm honest, every time I look at it, but uh, it's a small dot, and otherwise the saddle's mint. A couple more bits to draw your attention to. We've got uh, some very tried and trusted Look Keo blade pedals on there. These uh, were with me on my last season racing back in 2012, and they've seen quite a lot of hard service since then. They're still going strong, perhaps bearings maybe have seen better days, but, uh, but not bad considering the life that they've had. And then the last thing is the through axles. Now, the fact that it's a disc frame with through axles is nothing particularly noteworthy, but these ones are Allen key release ones. Now, I must admit that when it turned out, I was a bit like, oh God, they're annoying, aren't they, when you don't have a quick release on there. But now, having been using it for a number of months, I absolutely love them. Yeah, they take a little bit longer to get undone, but they look super clean. So for most of the time, when you don't need to undo them, it's absolutely brilliant. And I'm gonna try and get them on all my other bikes as well. Right then, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I still don't know how many of you have been waiting for it, but I have, you ready? 7.85 kilos. Well, that is my Orbea Orca disc, which I designed myself a little bit. Uh, do make sure you let me know what you think about it in the comments section down below. Although I trust you're going to be complimentary because I'm really quite protective over this. Now, whilst you're down there, do also make sure that you click on the subscribe button. Subscribe to the GCN Tech channel. I trust that you have, but if not, do make sure you click there or indeed just click on the globe. And if you wanna watch any more videos, well, why not check out the first ever GCN tech show that was up earlier in the week, or you could go back over onto the main channel and see how that Mayo customization actually works in the Orbea factory.